Welcome to Art Explained, the home of art, art history, stories, and art education for all who are interested. A woman undressing to take a bath is in a vulnerable position. She is alone, half-nude, self-absorbed, unprepared for others to watch her. For centuries, however, women experienced the ordinary act of washing in less than complete solitude. Women of a certain class were rarely alone, even when attending to the most intimate parts of their bodies. Their lives were, in a sense, communal property, especially those of wealthier women, who until the mid-19th century were the ones most frequently depicted in artwork. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you can be among the first to be notified of our new videos. We would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. About two-thirds of Americans shower every day, while in China about half the population reports bathing twice a week. Meanwhile, 80% of Australians shower every day. So how often do you really need to shower or bathe? As we head back into socializing and working, it's more important to know than ever. The experts don't have a clear answer. They say it all depends on your skin type. Those with drier skin should shower less, while those with oily skin can shower more often. The use of a bath in religious ritual or ceremonial rites include immersion during baptism in Christianity and to achieve a state of ritual cleanliness in a mikvah in Judaism. It is referred to as gusl in Arabic to attain ceremonial purity in Islam. All major religions place an emphasis on ceremonial purity, and bathing is one of the primary ways of attaining outward purity. In Hindu households, any acts of defilement are countered by undergoing a bath, and Hindus also immerse in a saravar as part of their religious rites. In the Sikh religion, there is a place at the Golden Temple where Rajni's husband's leprosy was cured by an immersion into the holy sacred pool. Many pilgrims bathe in the sacred pool, believing it will cure their illnesses as well. Although there were variations of bathhouses across different regions and time periods, the general plan and architectural principles were very similar. They consisted of a sequence of rooms which bathers visited in the same order, the changing room or undressing room, the cold room, the warm room, and the hot room. The nomenclature for these different rooms varied from region to region. Most historic bathhouses made use of some version or derivation of the Roman hippocast underfloor system for heating. A furnace or set of furnaces were located in a service room behind the walls of the hot room and set at a lower level than the steam rooms. The furnaces were used to heat water, usually in a large cauldron which was above them. The heated water was then delivered to the steam rooms. At the same time, hot air and smoke from the furnaces was channeled through pipes or conduits under the floor of the steam rooms, heating the rooms before rising through the walls and out the chimneys. As hot water was constantly needed, the furnaces kept burning throughout operating hours. Wood was continuously needed for fuel. 
Some hammams, which was the name that was used for bathhouses, such as those in Morocco, Turkey, and Damascus, also made use of recycled organic materials from other industries, such as wood shavings from carpenters' workshops and olive pits from the olive presses. In Ottoman baths, the cold room is often omitted completely or combined with the changing room. This room is often the largest domed chamber in the complex, with the dome supported on squinches, Turkish triangles, or decorative mukarnas. The cold room usually features a central fountain and has wooden walls and sitting areas which are used as a place to relax, drink tea, coffee, or sherbet, and socialize before and after bathing. One can bathe in the sea or a lake as well. Sea bathing is swimming in the sea or in sea water, and a sea bath is a protective enclosure for sea bathing. Unlike bathing in a swimming pool, which is generally done for pleasure or exercise purposes, sea bathing was once thought to have a curative or therapeutic effect. It arose from the medieval practice of visiting spas for the beneficial effects of the waters. The practice of sea bathing dates back to the 17th century, but became popular in the late 18th century. The invention of the first swimsuits dates back to the 18th century, as does the invention of the bathing machine. The growth and popularity of sea bathing developed from the perceived health benefits of mineral springs, such as those at Spa in Belgium, Bath in England, and Aachen in Germany. Seawater was similarly believed to have medicinal benefits. The medicinal benefits of the sun were also being recognized. There has been a tremendous growth in sea bathing, especially in the 20th century. However, the trend was slightly reversed after melanoma was linked with excessive exposure to the sun. With Australians having the highest rate of skin cancer in the world, the Slip Slop Slap campaign was developed to encourage people to slip on a shirt, slop on sunscreen, and slap on a hat. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.